The naval battle of Junkal took place between a squadron of the newly independent United Provinces of the River Plate under command of William Brown, and a squadron belonging to the Brazilian Empire, commanded by Sina Pereira. It spanned two days, from 8 to 9 February, 1827, in the waters of the Rio de la Plata. The two squadrons were initially of roughly equal strength, but because of superior command and control, and artillery training, the Argentines scored a decisive victory. Out of 17 Brazilian vessels, 12, including the flagship with its admiral, were captured and three were burnt. Not a single Argentine vessel was lost. In the aftermath of the battle, the 3rd Division, the arm of the Brazilian fleet tasked with controlling the Uruguay River and thus disrupting communications with the Argentine army then operating in the Banda Oriental, was completely destroyed. The result was the biggest naval victory for Argentina in the Cisplatan War the situation before the battle. The division of the Imperial Fleet during the second year of the Argentina-Brazil War, the Brazilians took advantage of their numerical superiority and divided their naval forces operating in the Rio de la Plata sector into three squadrons, or divisions. The first division, Bloqueo, was placed under the command of John Charles Pritz. It was tasked with blockading traffic to and from the principal port of Buenos Aires and secondary departure points such as Las Conchas, Ensenada de Barragan, and the mouth of the Salado River. The second division, named Oriental, or Mariath, was tasked with securing the Uruguayan coast from the mouth of the Uruguay River to the River Plate. The bulk of this division put under the command of the Frederico Mariath, who would later support the 3rd Division. The 3rd Division, under the command of Jacinto Roque de Sina Pereira, was to remain in the Uruguay River in order to divide the Argentine front and exploit political fault lines between the province of Entre Rios and Buenos Aires that had been exacerbated by the passing of the Unitary Constitution of 1826. By controlling the Uruguay River, the supply lines to an Argentine expeditionary force in the contested territory of Banda Oriental would be cut, and the Brazilians would have freedom of maneuver for a later attack on the Argentine flank. First Argentine advanced to confront the three threats, each of similar or superior strength to his own forces. William Brown acted rapidly to organize a squadron to advance past the mouth of the Uruguay, then find and destroy the 3rd Division. Simultaneously, to impede reinforcements from arriving from the Oriental Division and to secure his rear, he moved to fortify the island of Martin Garcia while he left the defense of the Buenos Aires coast to his flagship the Bergantine Independencia, along with the Bergantine Republica the Barca Congresso, and four cannonries under the command of Leonardo Rosales. Typical of Brown's audacity, the force he dispatched was in the best case only the equal of the 3rd Division. While the defense of Buenos Aires was clearly imperiled, the Argentine squadron sailed on 26 December 1826, arriving on the Uruguay River on 28. Finding the 3rd Division, the squadron gave chase, catching it in the Yangara the next day. Brown sent John Halstead Co., captain of the Sarandi to the Brazilian commander as an emissary to suggest Brazilian surrender. Cena Pereira brusquely responded by taking Co. prisoner and joining the battle, which lasted until the 30th. Due to the lack of wind and the narrowness of the channel, however, maneuver was difficult and the fighting was inconclusive. Impeded from gaining access to the narrow channel, Brown withdrew to the south towards Punta Gorda to wait for the Brazilians. He landed a small force on Vizcaino Island to secure it and send instructions to the militia of Santo Domingo de Soriano to cut supplies to the Brazilian fleet. In response, the Brazilians withdrew further north to Concepcion del Uruguay where they could secure supplies. Worried about the menace that the Mariath division posed to his rear, Brown decided to fully return to Buenos Aires in search of reinforcements for Martin Garcia Island. 
He ordered row sails to return the galley to Sarandi to Uruguay via the Parana de las Palmas while he finished the preparations, after which he rejoined the fleet by traveling aboard a small whaler. Preparations on 6 January The fortification work was begun. The Mariath Division launched an advance on the island with the corvette Maceo and nine other gunships. On the 18th Brown twice ordered his forces out to meet the Brazilian squadron and both times the Brazilians withdrew after an exchange of cannon. Fire. Brown wanted on one side to lure the 3rd Division into combat. Yet at the same time he didn't want the Mariath Division to join the 3rd or attack his rear. Essentially, the emissary carrying Rodrigo Pinto Guade's orders to Sina Pereira had been co-opted by Argentine patriots in Montevideo, and as a result Brown received timely news of the Imperial fleet's intentions. Thus, he took notice when Pinto Gerds communicated to Sina Pereira the orders given to Mariath to advance towards the south. Brown deduced that the 3rd Division would descend the river on February 7 in order to link up with Mariath. Brown believed that the fortifications and batteries of Martin Garcia would be prepared by then, allowing him to block the Mariath Division while forcing the 3rd Division into battle. The work of the new fort was duly accelerated. Brown himself worked as a master mason in the hold of the Santa Barbara. On the 5th, the works were ready and in a solemn ceremony Brown named the fort Constitution. In his speech to the garrison, he informed him that he expected the Argentine squadron to meet Cena Pereira within the next couple days. At the beginning of February there was word that the 3rd Division was taking on provisions at Arroyo de la China, by the 3rd it had passed. Paysandu and on the 6th it approached Tigrita 15 vessels, 73 guns, approximately 750 men Sarandi 7, Balcars 23, Maldonado 8, Pepper 2, Guanaco 8, Union 10. Uruguay 7, 8 one-gun launches, Brazil 17 vessels, about 750 men Oriental 11 captured, January 14 captured, Bertio 8 captured, 4 two-gun schooners, captured, 4 two-gun gunboats, captured, captured, 3 vessels, burnt, 2 others. The Argentine squadron numbered 15 vessels, including 3 major ships. The flagship Galita Sarandi under the direct command of Brown, the Galita Maldonado under the command of the young Francisco Drummond, fiancé of Brown's daughter, and the Burgantine Balcars, with 14 cannons and under the command of Francisco José Segui. Rounding out the squadron were the schooners La Pepa, under Calixto Silva, Guanaco, Union, the Smack Uruguay, and eight gunboats. In total, 69 cannons and a crew of approximately 750 men. The Brazilian squadron included 17 vessels. The flagship Galita Oriental under command of Jacinto Roque de Sina Pereira, the Burgantine Dona Januaria under Pedro Antonio Carvalho, the Galita Bertioga under Lieutenant George Broom, the Liberté du Sal under Lieutenant Augusto Venslor da Silva Lisboa, the 12 de Rautabro, the Galita Fortuna, the Galita Vittoria de Colonia, the Galita Itapa under the command of Lieutenant Germano Maximo de Souza Arana, the Galita 7 de Marco, the Galita Brocoio under Francisco de Paula Osorio, the Galita 9 de Janeiro, the Galita 7 de Setombro, two gun schooners and the cannon Ras Cannon Aya, Paranagua, and Iguife. In total, 65 guns and approximately 750 men. For the first and only time during the war, there was relative parity between the forces, or at least, the Brazilian advantage was not so great. Approach of the fleets The Argentine squadron spent the night of February 7 anchored between Jungle Island and the west bank of the river. At dawn on the 8th the sails of the Brazilians were spotted descending the river, taking advantage of a gentle north wind. Brown gave the order to weigh anchors and place his ships in a line of battle arrayed obliquely to the southeast from Junkal Island. 
the Galita Sarandi formed the center of the line, with Maldonado in the vanguard and Balcas in the rear. The Brazilian fleet continued its advance until the wind died down around 11.30, at which point it anchored some 1,000 yards from the Argentine line, with the flagship Oriental in the center. Beginning of the battle the weather on the 8th was stormy, hot and humid, with light and variable winds, typical for that time of year in the littoral regions. Sino Pereira anchored his ships and unleashed a fire ship toward the enemy fleet. However, this was promptly sunk by Argentine gunfire. At noon Brown ordered forward a detachment of six of his gunboats, which could fire at a longer range than his other vessels with their 18-pounder guns. However, the Argentine long guns had longer range and were manned by superior gunners. After exchanging fire for approximately two hours, a sudden sudestada is the Spanish name for a climatic phenomenon common to the Rio de la Plata, separated the fleets and forced him to suspend the battle. The Brazilians maintained the dominant windward position, because the wind was blowing towards the Argentines, the Brazilians had the initiative. Sino Pereira duly tried to stage his ships in an attack line. However, the maneuvers of the vessels was disastrous. The Galita Liberdade do sell grounded, while the Dona Januaria left the formation and strayed within range of the fire of General Balcas, the Sarandi, and three gunboats. At three in the afternoon the wind again died down, and the action was again reduced to a long-range artillery duel. Visibility was steadily reduced by the smoke of the guns, which were audible as far away as Buenos Aires and Colonia del Sacramento. Once again a severe storm rolled in and the fleet struggled fruitlessly to maintain their positions. The General Balcas began to settle, but succeeded in remaining afloat. Eventually the storm died down and was replaced by a northeast breeze. Sino Pereira attempted to take advantage of the new wind by retiring to the north to take up better positions. Once again, the resulting maneuver was poor. The 12 de Rautabra could only be saved by the help of the remaining ships, while the hospital ship Fortuna was unable to anchor and was blown towards the Argentine lines where she was captured. As a result of the Fortuna's capture John Halstedco was freed after having been a prisoner on board since December 1826. It was midnight before the Brazilian squadron was fully reunited in a disorderly anchorage near Solar Island. Second day exhausted, the Brazilians were not able to lay any plans that night. At dawn, the captains of the fleet boarded the Oriental to decide the plan of battle, basically, to choose between fighting while maneuvering or to remain anchored. Sino Pereira did not make a decision and opted to choose his tactics as the situation developed. For his part, Brown was ready. At 8 a.m., with the southeast breeze, he ordered the Sarandi to run up a red flag, the signal for the Argentines to occupy the windward position, marshal into a battle line, and advance towards the Brazilians. In response, Sino Pereira gave the order to form a battle line and drop anchor. However, once again, the result was confusion and disorder. Some of the gunboat drifted out of formation and downwind. Sina Pereira, shouting ineffectively with a megaphone, tried to restore order. With the Argentines closing quickly and in good order, he changed his decision, now ordering his fleet to raise anchors and attempt to maneuver. The Doña Januaria, the Bertioga and the Oriental duly advanced on the approaching Argentines, but without the support of the rest of the squadron, which remained dispersed behind them. The three ships were quickly engaged by the General Balcas and the Argentine vanguard. The Argentine fire was effective. A shot from the General Balcas soon destroyed the Januaria's bowsprit, and another knocked down her foremast, causing such disruption that she was on the point of foundering. 
Cena Pereira ordered the small schooner Vitoria de Colonia to take Januaria under tow, but the schooner Uruguay blocked the way. The attack was so rapid and devastating that the captain of the Januaria, Lieutenant Pedro Antonio Carvalho, ordered his cannons to concentrate on the Argentine artillery while a team remained to attempt to scuttle the ship and he departed with the crew in boats towards the east. For his part, Drummond, commander of the Maldonado, attacked the Bertioga, under the command of his old comrade, Lieutenant George Broom. An accurate shot from a heavy Argentine gun knocked down the mainmast of the Bertioga and the ship, now unable to maneuver, was forced to surrender after a half hour of combat. Throughout this time, the General Belcast under Francisco Segui led a combined attack against the Oriental. The intense crossing fire knocked out the Oriental's cannons, half of its carronades, and caused 37 casualties, including Cena Pereira. Despite the losses the Brazilians refused to strike their colors, which had been nailed to the mast. Finally the ship was boarded and Segui accepted the sword of the Brazilian commander as a sign of surrender. With the surrender of the Oriental, the remaining vessels of the Brazilian fleet disengaged and attempted to flee, turning the Argentine victory into a rout. Brown transferred his flag to the General Belcast and ordered the Sarandi and the gunboats to give chase to the broken Brazilian squadron. He boarded the surrendered Brazilian flagship and was presented with the sword of the Brazilian commander, at which he commended Francisco Segui with the words Usted SLH Iacutaro e. Brown retired with four of the prizes towards Martin Garcia to repair damages, write his report, and prepare for the eventual attempt of the Mariath Division, stationed to the south of the island, to force its way north. Martin Garcia Mariath's orders were to use his ten vessels to overcome the fortifications at Martin Garcia, attack the Argentine rear, and reinforce the 3rd Division. Although he could already hear cannon fire in the distance, Mariath moved slowly and with great caution, as the main Argentine battery were on the west side, covering the Grand Canal, Mariath sent a schooner down the Canal del Inferno, the passage to the east of the island, in order to determine if the water was deep enough for his squadron. In response, the garrison moved its mobile battery to the east to defend against a possible landing. The move proved unnecessary, however, as the Brazilian vessel ran hard aground. Mariath was thus dissuaded from taking the eastern route, although his pilot thought it still possible. He commenced an artillery duel with the main batteries, until the storm obliged him to suspend the indecisive action. At this point, Mariath believed that the shallow water, the unpredictable weather, and the formidable batteries at Martin Garcia made passing the island too risky. Thus, on the 9th, while the 3rd Division was being destroyed, the Mariath Division remained in the distance as a spectator. On the 10th, Mariath finally decided to withdraw in the direction of Colonia de Sacramento, where he arrived a week later. The first news of the defeat reached the Brazilians on the morning of February 12, when eight survivors of the Oriental arrived. Their stories were confirmed by the boat of Lieutenant Carvalho, and later, on the 14th, by the arrival of the only survivors, the schooner Vitoria de Colonia in a gunboat, escorted by the frigate Donia Paula. The chase on the day following the battle, the schooner Brocoio was pursued and captured, in addition to two gunboats that ran aground in the mouth of the Parana River and were likewise made Argentine prizes. At this point the 3rd Division was reduced to the schooners Liberté do Sal, Itapoa, 7 de Marco, 9 de Janeiro and 7 de Setombro. The gunboats Cananea y Paranagua and an assortment of smaller launches. All of these surviving and functioning vessels were in full flight north up the Uruguay River. The German skipper of the schooner Itapoa, a Lieutenant Sousa Arana, took command of the reduced squadron, which soon suffered further setbacks. The schooners Liberté du Sal, the Itapoa and the Seven de Marco all ran aground and were burnt to prevent capture. 
The dwindling fleet continued north with a total of 351 officers and crew piled aboard, with the intent of surrendering to the authorities of the province of Entre Rios, rapidly completing the reorganization of his forces, and in face of the withdrawal of the Mariath Division. Brown quickly returned his attention to the survivors of Junkel. Already on the 14th he had returned to the Uruguay River in the Maldonado, accompanied by some six other vessels. On the 15th he arrived at Fray Bentos and received the news that Sousa Arana, after casting his cannons into the sea, had surrendered his ships to the governor of Entre Rios. Brown anchored outside Gualeguay to and asked for the handover of the ships and prisoners. However, the Entre Rios authorities resisted these demands, foreseeing that such a capitulation would have grave results for their own cherished autonomy. In response to this rebuff Brown mounted a successful combined land and sea operation which resulted in the final capture of the Brazilian fleet.